Oh my god, why can't I get any reception out here in the middle of nowhere? Wait, this isn't a cell phone, it's a landline. Wait, this isn't spit, it's just part of the PNG. Wait, this isn't the middle of nowhere, it's... Empire City! Oh, hold on, the remains of Empire City. What the? How'd they find me so quickly? The uh, here. Okay, I think they might be gone. Well, this would be a good place to hide until they disperse. Not too bad a background either. Might be able to use this. Okay, now I just need to wait for some eccentric side character to enter so they can liven up this intro and tag along for the rest of the series. Uh, any, any minute now. Well, hello there, fine patron. What brings you here today? Looks like you're in a mighty fine pickle, if I do say so myself. <laughs> okay, I got bored and found this costume while searching the place. It's gonna be a one-man journey for a good while. Speaking of a mighty fine pickle, though, a few things happened during my little journey. I'm sure you all have heard about Activision. I mean, Blizzard. I mean, Activision Blizzard, right? Yeah, they've been up to some crazy stuff recently, and... Jesus fucking Christ. I've documented on a few of their mishaps in the past, most recently with Blizzard's sad attempts at maintaining longevity with their franchises, but I'm not sure we've seen something from them on the scale of this massive ongoing lawsuit from the California Department of Fair Employment following a two-year investigation that had found a pervading frat boy type culture resulting in heavy discrimination against female employees that management not only failed to address or prevent, but rather encouraged. There's much more to discuss and dissect regarding this ongoing fiasco, but I'll leave it at that for now as I want to see how many more deets pop up by year's end and, more importantly, how much damage Activision Blizzard will have taken. Cause they're taking a lot of damage right now. Seeing this play out got me curious about those other mishaps Activision Blizzard had found themselves in over the years, particularly the ones that occurred before the merger with Vivendi that screwed up the naming conventions. It's relatively extensive too, especially since they themselves were created out of controversy and had also unintentionally sparked what is still one of the biggest controversial times in video game history. We'll get to that sooner or later, but the incident that tickled my tiny brain the most was one surrounding a humble western-themed game, as said game had some problematic aspects that have aged like raw beef. Yippers, my fellow cowboys, cowgirls, cow-thems, and non-cow-binaries, we're taking our six shooters and heading straight into Yeehaw Land with 2005's Gun. Okay, I'm gonna stop with that. This title was developed by Neversoft, the folks best known for the Tony Hawk Pro Skater series, and a few other notable titles like Skeleton Warriors. <laughs> Okay, they made these two, but this one's just too embarrassing to not show. Gun was sent out to the fields of gaming during the mid-2000s alongside several other Western-themed games that have somehow done much worse than it, reception-wise and sales-wise, including Rockstar's own Red Dead Revolver. Yeah, yeah, I know, they put it out on a bajillion platforms, but shut up with your logic. I need to tell you what this game's about, because it's very cool. Set during the Old West, Gunn tells the story of Colton White, whose father gets ganked at the start of the game after telling Colt that he ain't his father. And he now has to find the bastard that did it while dealing with all sorts of Western events across a big open world, mostly by blowing away everyone in his path. Man, I thought I'd catch a break after finishing up that Rockstar Saga series. Don't worry, the tinfoil was just an act, I'm not gonna pass out again. I hope. 
but Gun really does seem like a stripped down Wild West take on the GTA formula. Right down to the free roaming mission structure, some token RPG esque elements, the mostly uncomplicated story, and the accusations of racism. Yep, it weren't the violence or the sex lents or the alcohol lents that caught the eye of the proverbial controversy storm this time around. That shit was so passe by this point. See, as the game takes place in the Wild Wild West, it includes aspects typical of media portraying this era of time. Or should I say, stereotypical. Among the murderous outlaws, horny outlaws, and the legions of underlings the Big Bat Outlaw sends out to cap your western ass, you'll be gunning down... God damn it, the devil won't give up! <laughs> ...the indigenous. This mere fact caught the attention of the Association for American Indian Development, and a few months after the game's release, a subtly named website called BoycottGun.com popped up hosting a petition which aimed to make Activision, and I quote, edit and remove all derogatory, harmful, and inaccurate depictions of American Indians from the video game Gun, including, but not limited to, the slaughtering of the renegade Apaches, the atrocity of Indian scalping, and the misinformation of Indian traditions of killing sacred white animals. They further elaborate on their reasoning by stating that while this is a mature game and that these sorts of events were very persistent during this time period, it doesn't excuse the casualness the game seems to have towards the murder of Native Americans, claiming that if it were another commonly marginalized group having lead plugged into their virtual bodies, it would have caused a much larger uproar. Should Activision fail to address these unacceptable depictions, they would seek to have the game recalled from all retail locations and the interweb. Activision responded to the outcry with the standard response to this sort of thing, stating they don't condone any of the atrocities that occurred in the land of the Wild West, and that it wasn't their intention to offend any race group, while apologizing to any folk who were offended. The more things change, the closer we get to the sun exploding. And boy, doesn't this sound oh so very familiar. Ah, uh, yes, another Rockstar comparison, just what the Rich Doctor ordered. Yeah, this certainly seems to echo the whole kill all the Haitians incident courtesy of GTA Vice City, but as with that crap, I felt it would be best to try and contextualize the game's portrayal of the Native American folk to see if the AID's claims firmly hold up or fall apart with ease. And how do we do that? By dressing up as one using this conveniently placed costume so that we understand their perspective. Alright, here we- Aww, how did that happen? Okay, I'll just play the game for myself. I really want to wear that costume. I don't know about y'all, but I've known about Gun for a long ass time. It was one of those games that always intrigued me during my youth because A, it's called Gun, B, it was M rated, and C, this cover is fucking awesome and y'all can't convince me otherwise. I had been gifted on Steam a while back too, so I tried to get my Gun experience started through that and. Uh, well, there's a reason it gets constantly discounted on there. It is a bare-bones-ass port. Seeing as that wouldn't suffice, I decided to get the only console version that had widescreen support without the use of mods. That being the Xbox 360 version, which was actually a launch title for the system. Hmm, go figure. Just to get some general thoughts on the game out of the way, it's fine. I wasn't exactly disappointed with my experience after a decade and a half of personal hype, but I wasn't exactly impressed with it as a whole either. It really is like a Western Cowboys and Outlaws take on the GTA formula, albeit a rather short and shallow one. Combat mechanics are pretty good, especially with the bullet time, and it does provide a nice challenge, but I didn't care for the mission structure and the overworld wasn't particularly interesting either. I'm not kidding when I say I found more enjoyment with the poker minigame than most of the game's missions, if only because these sketch headshots are hilarious. And that kind of leads into my thoughts on the story, too. I mean, it's also fine, but nothing that special. I felt like a subpar pastiche of a bunch of Western movies. A well-acted and decently written one, thanks to the load of talent never saw brought on board for the project, but a pastiche nonetheless. And as for how it portrays those natives, this is where we're going to have to get into spoilers, but I recommend sticking around anyway because this is kind of crucial to the AID's argument and... Well, it's the core of the video, too, so strap in. After Cole's not-dad dies a horrible death, he finds his way to a little town called Dodge City, where he meets up with a prostitute and the town's marshal to search for the guy who did the horrible deed. 
He learns he can find some more info further west at Empire City, but in order to get there, he'll need to assist in fixing the bridge that'll open up the path to that place. And the thing that's keeping it from being fixed is... a group of Apaches. Brothers! Shoot him! Hush! Hush! Yeah. After that gets taken care of, the bridge gets finished and Cole sets off to Empire. Unfortunately, on the way there, he encounters more... Apaches. Yeah, at, at this stage, it doesn't seem like a very flattering portrayal, does it? Like, this ain't no street war between rival gangs that you just happen to be on one side of, right? To play Devil's Advocate, though, in these situations, they are the aggressor, as they're preventing the way forward, so to me, they're just being treated the same way as other enemies in the game are treated, and it's not a matter of you slaughtering them without warning or cause. That said, these segments still gave me that same... <sighs> feeling I usually get when seeing older media that probably might not fly in today's culture. Not that I was really perturbed by it, given the above, but it didn't make me go <laughs> any less. I should also mention there are some iffy attitudes towards other folks of other races here, and, uh, at the very least, you're not plugging holes into them. Before any potential PC complaints start cropping up, though, relax. I ain't no prude, nor do I need a history lesson on these folks, as I'm well aware stuff like this did happen during those times, it just feels a bit off to me the same way any stereotype does. Maybe y'all will agree, or maybe this is just a me problem and I should limp back to my sanitized media collection for Soy Boys. However, keep in mind that I did say at this stage, because after this stage, you don't find any more natives during the story missions. In fact, after a series of events, you end up siding with them, and it's later revealed that Cole is Apache himself. With this knowledge, he uses his gun skills to fight for good and stop the big bad from getting all the gold in the world, and okay, who gives a shit? Hey there, fella. Yeah, you, the one voiced by an indigenous actor, which is actually kind of nice. Thanks for taking me in and accepting me as one of your own. I just hope you were okay with me blowing the heads off your people like five hours ago and then scalping their asses. I mean, scalps. Oh, yeah, about the scalping. That is an optional thing you can do to any enemy on Death's Door, not just the natives, but as it turns out, there's no real point to it other than... because you can do it. Apparently, they were planning to allow players to sell them for cash, but I imagine they wised up to that abhorrent idea and left it out. As for that third part in the petition, um... Well, there are some side missions where you can hunt game, like wolves, buffaloes, bears, and the hunter describes it as necessary to protect their tribe and family, but these are also optional and, well, less efficient ways of getting cash and skill points than other side missions or activities in the game. I just went around finding any random pockets of gold that are placed throughout the world and got money through there. Oh, and I also kicked everyone's ass at poker. It didn't really matter, because the AID didn't really go into much detail regarding these mechanics beyond the quick mention in their call to action, so I guess I won't either. I didn't even finish the first one with the wolf. That bastard has eyes in the back of its head. So that's about as far as those elements go. I mean, the whole switching size twist is an, an unusual trope in these kinds of stories, but yeah, it still feels kind of incongruous considering... Funnily enough, the AID were well aware of this twist, and it did little to quell their outrage regarding the events beforehand. Now, taking all of this context into consideration, I originally did think the AID had a sound argument here, as, again, this is the kind of thing that can age badly right out the gate and get much worse down the line, and Activision playing ignorance was not helping matters. However, I wouldn't say it constitutes the game being recalled and re-edited, and the more I looked at their statement, and the more I thought about how these insensitive aspects factored into the game, I think the AID are being a bit too extreme here. As much as they would like to claim otherwise, the game never reaches the point of condoning outright genocide of the indigenous, and they seem to display some ignorance of their own with their comparative hypotheticals. Furthermore, I highly doubt Activision was going to comply here, not because they're morally unjust and uncaring, that's unrelated. Now, this was an issue of practicality. Referring to the kill all the Haitians thing again, all Rockstar had to do was edit one line of text and then everything was hunky-dory. 
Activision and Neversoft would have had to do far more work to make the kind of changes the AID were demanding, and since the game had been out for a few months by that point, I don't blame them for simply putting out a statement and forgetting about the whole affair, which is exactly what they and everyone else ended up doing. Looking through the reviews, these parts of the game were rarely mentioned, and the general reaction to the controversy among the sites covering the story seemed to be one of dismissiveness. Except for the one or two Native American-centric sites with the same views as the AID. As for the community responses, I took one look at the comments for the GameSpot article, lost a few brain cells, and figured there wasn't going to be anything more insightful to find, so I'll just say I doubt those folks were going to be supportive for the AID's cause. Sadly, further research on this and any potential follow-up yielded little to no results. No articles, no lawsuits, no hugs and kisses, no nothing. Frankly, there's an air of half-assedness to this petition, and this is about as fitting a stop point as it could receive. <laughs> As for any updates on the companies themselves, I did actually find some info. I was honestly a bit skeptical as to whether or not the AID had even existed since searching for them kept spitting up results for similarly named but not quite the same exact organizations. But no, one of the articles covering the incident did provide a link to their website and despite that domain not being housed by them any longer, the archives reveal they were still around and kicking as late as 2012, and looking at their board of members at that point, they appear to have some powerful people in their ranks. No idea if they're still around today though, maybe they broke apart or got renamed to one of those other organizations, I don't know, take your pick. Now what about that petition? Let's take a look at the archives for that to see where it ended up. Maybe even figure out how many had signed it. Uh, uh oh. As for Neversoft, work on a sequel to Gun had been underway shortly after release, but according to a 2019 interview with its project lead, it hadn't sold well enough to make a profit, so Activision canned it. Following this, they would put Neversoft on the Guitar Hero train for the next few years before switching them over to COD development and eventually merging them into Infinity Ward, thus dissolving it entirely. At least they went out in style. And what about Activision? I wonder what they've been up to recently. Hold on, let me check today's news. Ah, well, that covers that. Overall, in spite of this being a single incident for a single game, there were quite a few layers to uncover and sift through. Even if this discussion doesn't amount to a whole lot we didn't already know, it is certainly more interesting than Rockstar's own scuffle of this nature. It's also a lot less cut and dry than the last Native American controversy we covered, wouldn't you agree? However, as I said, the AID's petition feels a bit too half-assed and impractical to have really done anything more than start that very discussion. But I'd like to think their heart was in the right place, which is more than I can say for other organizations we've seen on this show. Let's be real here though, what should have caught a firestorm of controversy with this game was how you use whiskey to regain your health, if only because drinking whiskey is just a heinous idea in general. I mean, have any of you actually had this crap? It tastes like someone grounded up a box of Cheerios and let it ferment inside a dead tree. I just don't understand how people can drink this garbage. So I told him, fuck you. I'll make the story up as I go along and show your snooty ass that the Rockstar Saga wasn't a fluke. And that's how I... <clears throat> That's how I got kicked out of Iowa. What do you think of that, fellas? Yeah, this place is a shithole. I ain't seen here. Beyond the sounds of no one, masters of beyond. Beyond the sounds of no one. Where is the cross? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> What's he saying? <laughs> By the way, destiny is still alive.